Hi everyone, welcome to Frisco, Texas. Welcome to the Museum of the American Railroad. We're going back in time to our June slash July trip to Texas when we were spending a couple of weeks there for the 4th of July and to see Kayla's family. And one of the things that was on the top of my bucket list was to go to the museum here where they have a bunch of locomotives and trains, including a big boy steam locomotive there. While the big boy was a steam locomotive, it was the largest one built for the Union Pacific Railroad. Only a few of them were made and only a few of them survive today. At the time, about 25 to 26 of them were built. And in today's uh, world, there's maybe only a handful left. The 4014 is currently active and just finished a summer tour, and the 4018 is on display at this museum, and the 4012 is on display at Steamtown, Pennsylvania. Anyway, I, it was something I really wanted to check out, not just for myself, but to put on video for you guys, and it was a lot of fun. It was very hot on a nice July summer day, and it was just pretty unique and awesome experience and if you ever happen to be in the dfw area of texas i would and you're a rail fan i would definitely suggest you go down there and check the place out it's definitely worth it and you'll hear me talk about the details in the video as we go along somehow even though we did an intro for the video it got deleted or corrupted or lost somewhere so here is a new intro as we play this in october of 2021 we do still have a few videos from our summer trip to Texas ready to go to go up on YouTube here for you to enjoy, and we'll get through to those as quickly as we possibly can. So anyway, enjoy this uh, long video, but fun one for me, and if you're a rail fan, I think you'll have a lot of fun watching it as well, and if you're not a rail fan, maybe this will make you one. Who knows? Anyway, enjoy, and we will talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Look at some of these trains. And this is just getting started. I like being able to walk right up against these locomotives here. We got a walking tour here. We're allowed to be on here. You pay $15, which lets a person, which lets you get into the museum too, which we'll see at the end of the tour. And look at all the trains they got up ahead too. You're not even ready for what we're gonna see past these. Look at this oldie. And that's part of what this museum is all about. Look all the way down there. We're gonna be checking out all of these trains. And my favorite, the big boy, which is hiding somewhere in here. This is one time you can actually walk on the railroad tracks. <laughs> I like seeing these old look. Oh, there's a Pennsylvania Railroad one, so we're talking about my neck of the woods. Oh man, Santa Fe up there. I have a few model Santa Fe's at home. So we're getting ready to go into this Pullman car. It's from 1925. Made out of old Model T's. Ford Model T's. And we're going to get to walk through that, exit out the other side, and then I'm going to get to show you some more locomotives, including an electric locomotive from the Pennsylvania Railroad. Let's take a walk in here and check it out. So that's that car, and here's the one we're going inside of. Look at this, like a door at home. Vintage, look how small it is in here too. This doorway is only like two and a half feet wide. Wow, very narrow passage. I did not expect it to look like this. However, this is one that had little rooms in it. Look at this, you got your own little room in here for if you're traveling with a bunk bed. And I got several other rooms going along. This is pretty cool though. How many times do you get to do this? You don't. Hey, this one got a little sink in it. 
Wow, look at this one. Here's a day room here with a couch. Nice little table here. Got another seat behind the door. Your little sink. Pretty cool. Another bunk bedroom. Boy, is that one tiny. <laughs> There's another day room, and this one got a bathroom in it. I'm imagining they probably had a shower in here, I would think. Oh, look, we can go through here. It's like conjoining rooms. I think this is from 1925. Look how old the switch is. This door is closed. That's a very small door. And then we come out here where we got plenty of room. <laughs> look, look at it. <laughs> yeah, through North Carolina. Here's our main line going through PA. I've done a bunch of videos there. Look at the old clock up there. Very neat to see. Very neat to see. Let me show you some photos over here. Back in the day. Okay, so we're gonna step off of this car here. And right here, it's from my neck of the woods here. <laughs> Pennsylvania Railroad, Horseshoe Curve, Portage Railroad, everything. Company in the United States, but not less the biggest railroad, but the biggest company. But the Great Depression is hitting too, so they still had a lot of problems, as everybody did. So through the WPA in the 30s, uh, they finished building the big electric lines between D.C. and New York and they needed a locomotive that could pull uh, 10 to 12 passenger cars up to 100 miles an hour. So you saw the electric locomotive, this little tiny locomotive, and then look at this giant Union Pacific locomotive here. That's a biggie. Those are basically American locomotive trying to keep up with federal We'll look at the Santa Fe in just a moment. Look at these little guys here. I like this little tiny one here. Traveling last year, looking for donor parts for that. But I'm going to talk about this big yellow locomotive. It's called the Centennial. It's about 98 feet long, and it's the biggest diesel electric locomotive ever built. And these were built by General Motors from 1969 to 71. 47 of them exclusively for Union Pacific. And the head of the railroad basically is like, give us the fastest, strongest engine possible, which meant smashing two big locomotives together into one massive locomotive. It's about 98 feet long. Wow. Has two V16 turbocharged, 3,300 horsepower diesel engines hooked to two generators making electricity to turn the motors and the gears on the axles. And this was made to go up to 90 miles an hour, pulling long distance freight trains across the, the long transcontinental freight routes. And they ran on and off through the early 1980s. But they were an experimental engine, so if they broke down or needed some work after 15, 20 years of service, uh, they replaced them with just some newer engines. And uh, today there's 12 or 13 of these left, and Union Pacific has one in their heritage fleet, though I do not know if it's currently running. The website doesn't have a lot of specific information on it about it being currently running, so I don't think it is. This is one of the most iconic paint jobs you'll ever see. When you look at model trains, a lot of times you see what? Santa Fe. And I've had a few of these in HO scale and even larger scale trains growing up. My dad had a bunch. So it's a red diesel electric and the Santa Fe war bonnet paint scheme. 
It's one of our newer additions. We got it in the 1999. It's the 1967 FP45. It'll be a fun photo op. I don't know if we can do them all now or on the way back out, but the steps on the front. I know we have such a large group, so when we're done here with the, the main tour, you know, we can take our time for those wanting to do pictures and stuff. It is a cool photo op up on that nose platform. But it's pulled the last passengers from Chicago to Los Angeles from 67 to 71, and then pulled freight from 71 to 99. Amtrak, funded by the governments, come in. The private railroads uh, got out of the passenger business because they had been losing money for 20 to 30 years as the Depression and war and the way things traveled, you know, affected the railroads pretty mightily from the kind of the height in the 20s to the 60s when they got out. And we hope to get this one running. We actually do have the parts to install in it. So if we get to running, uh, you know, for excursions and stuff in the future, it's a great locomotive. Eastern style, 484 wheel configuration. And these were built from the mid-20s to the mid-30s. Uh, initially to pull the heavier steel passenger cars. This is a big steam locomotive, but not nearly as big as the big boy. 6,500 gallons of oil. This is the fireman's side we're on. It gives us not much shade, but a little uh, with the sun today. And the fireman's job was to get your fuel in the firebox, water into the boiler, and... Let's go around to the back side. Through all the, to the fire in here, through all these pipes, to boil the water and the steam for the engineer. We took some of the big rods off. We're going to go around to the other side here. There you go. Look at the view from this side, where there's nobody over here. It's a big locomotive. Behind it's the Santa Fe. There it is, guys. The Union Pacific Big Boy 4018. Biggest steam locomotive ever built. Only a few dozen of these were ever made. And here is one that I've been wanting to see for many years with my own eyes. And I'm more than pleased to be able to share this experience with you. This is one gigantic train all right so this is big boy the world's biggest steam engine some of you are maybe randomly here with family or friends that drug you i was a kid once in hot <laughs> summers like this being drugged through every Civil War battlefield in the southeast, so I totally understand, kids, what you're going through out here. But uh, this is, you know, what most people who know what they're seeing when they get out here, this is the one that brings you here. It's the big boy, the biggest steam engine ever built. It's 133 feet, about 1.2 million pounds. 25 were built by Alco in New York for Union Pacific in the first half of the 1940s. And Union Pacific was doing a big, I'm going to stand kind of here in the middle, so I can face my speaker out towards everybody. Enjoy the shade with you for a second. I've been in the sun since like 6 o'clock. Even though it wasn't much, it was already hot. So these were built starting in the late 30s when Union Pacific was beginning a big freight upgrade program. It was the catalyst for this. And by 1940, they had the Wasatch Mountains to take care of. And they needed an engine that could pull 7.2 million pounds of freight over the Wasatch Mountains, but go 60 mile an hour minimum on level terrain so they could sync it up with the rest of the freight network and Alco built 25 of these in the first half of the 1940s and they were probably going to be called the Wasatch class but some uh, worker, what they did was on the front of the locomotive, what they did was they wrote 
V for victory, the famous World War II slogan, because these are on the assembly line in 1941, and they wrote Big Boy on it, and the name stuck. And this one ran from 42 to 57, ran like a million, 30,000 miles wow. during its career. And was officially retired, I think, late 1962. And then in 1964, Union Pacific, as they were scrapping these, eight of them ended up in collections in the 60s. It went to Dallas in the summer of 1964, probably a hot, I think it was a hot August, July day, something like today, so they could have it for the state fair in September and October, and that was how we got it. And uh, for those who live here in Texas or along this route, Union Pacific has just announced number 4014. Some of you may be familiar. I'm not getting deep into the background with the big group, but one of these is running again was about a five and a half year project. Went on a, like three tours, COVID. Now that the world is pretty much kind of normal again, they just announced their next tour and it's in Cheyenne, Wyoming. It's oh. gonna go Cheyenne to Kansas City, Oak, well, through Oklahoma, Houston and Fort Worth, or Fort Worth then Houston, then New Orleans and Little Rock are kind of the four big cities in this area. Wow. Quote area, it's a big, big state, big country where they're going to have some extended stops and then it's going to kind of figure eight back through Denver, Colorado, Kansas into Colorado and then up to Wyoming. But 4014 is running. Look up Union Pacific Big Boy 4014. I haven't seen any details on the exact time or place of Fort Worth. I'm sure those local can probably tell me because you know where all the uh, rail logic spots are. I guess the big freight yard there where they and BNSF kind of meet, I'm guessing. But yeah, one of these is running again, so it's going to be really cool, a pretty rare opportunity. It'll you know actually be here in North Texas and in Houston right. here just over a month from now. Wow. So if you want to feel the, the ground move beneath you, they'll probably be, I think they keep people about probably this far back, as I think they asked 25 feet back from it, but I've seen people kind of close on some of those videos. I wonder how hot that steam is coming out when they get scalded, but probably from here to those cars deep along the way. It's going to be a big turnout. People like to check out the tour schedule, get their cameras and get set up and wait for it to come by. It's going to be for the enthusiast or just the generalist, you know, it's going to be a pretty rare, pretty cool opportunity. So we're right about 35 minutes. We've been going a little faster than normal because I want to give us some more time on the way out because our group is so big. Um, the Frisco steam engine cab down here. For those who want to go into the cab, we'll do that on the way out. We're just doing it then instead of on the way in because it takes so much time with the big group. But I don't want to neglect our diesel electrics right here. The blue and yellow one we're trying to get running. It's a CF7. We're replacing fuel injectors and it's going to need new batteries. Maybe the ones that I had, had to remove the power cord from the charger on that one. And the red and silver one is a 1949 General Motors F7. It is operational, and we use it for moving everything around. Wow. Yeah, this is so cool, getting to check out all these locomotives. Look at all the batteries in there. Look at all the batteries they got in there. <laughs> Boy, is that a big train. I'm so glad I got to see that with my own eyes. Let's check out this one, too. This one, as I said, is still operational. It helps move the trains and cars around here. Pretty neat to see, and the fact that it still runs. Wow. Isn't that cool? Let's get up front here a little bit. That is a cool looking train. 
now I might be biased, but I think this is a pretty good looking shot from back here. Especially since everybody's on the other side. We are allowed to walk all, all over here though. But this is cool. Uh, this is... I'm glad I came out here to see it. I don't care how hot it is. This made it worth it. So that part is still under construction. And basically this whole site is. And they're getting the funds. They're waiting for grants from the state to get them. So they can put a roof over a lot of these cars and trains. But still, how often can you walk out on the tracks and be up close and personal with all of these rail cars, locomotives, whatnot. This is amazing. And my favorite, my favorite piece that I wanted to see was this. And I'm so glad to finally do it and get up close and personal with one of these. Biggest steam locomotive ever built. That's a shot. So imagine this. I'm five and a half foot tall, right? These wheels are six feet tall, so they're bigger than me. Look at that. Look at the size of this wheel, for instance. Higher than my head from where I'm standing. I would not want to get run over by that. I would have a bad, bad day. <laughs> day over. <laughs> but, oh man. You don't know how badly I've wanted to see one of these for years, well before I even started doing YouTube, and I was glad to bring you along. All right, so here's a little bit of a unique experience. We're on the Frisco steam locomotive, and that siren you hear in the background is the storm siren, which they do a monthly test on, on the first Wednesday of the month. The weather is perfectly fine. There are no tornadoes or bad weather. I mean, look, it's a beautiful day here. It's just their monthly test. So kind of a unique experience to get that while being here. But anyway, yeah, we're here on the Frisco steam locomotive and just look at all the controls they have on here. Where would you even begin? I wouldn't have the foggiest idea. <laughs> but it sure would be fun to sit on this. Here's your horn, pull that. Oh boy, would this be fun to ride. But I'm sure it's hot, very, very hot, especially here. I don't know if I can open this doesn't look like I can but that's okay but this is really cool to see Let's sit here on this nice comfy seat look out this tiny little window here and that's how you see everything looking out the window of the steam locomotive But I'm glad you got to see this, and now we're going to go inside and look at Traintopia. Here's the thermometer. This is how hot it is right now. Nearly 90. Woo! <laughs> and that's that. <laughs> that is that. That is almost 90. It's probably in the mid-80s out here, but that metal gets hot. But anyway, we're going to climb on down here. I'll have to not record this so I don't fall and die, but I'll show you this Frisco locomotive one more time and then we'll go to Traintopia. Anyway, here is the Frisco locomotive. This gigantic locomotive. I actually hear a train coming through. Oh, that was just a truck. <laughs> so that was a cool little experience to see that. I, I'm standing on the rails next to this Frisco steam locomotive and I mean just the meteor it's just it's huge but nothing compared to the big boy and I'm just glad you were able to come along for the ride and check this place out with me okay now that we looked at the locomotives outside we're now going to go into the Frisco Discovery Center here and we're going to go through these doors here and check out Traintopia they even have an arcade or video game museum here as well I like that with the uh with the tile that looks pretty cool but anyway, we're going to go inside here in Traintopia in the AC where it's nice and cold. Because, lordy, is it hot out here. Wow. But I don't care. It was worth it. Oh, my God. That AC feels amazing. <laughs> All right. Let's check out Traintopia, a museum full of model trains everywhere. There we go. Traintopia. And this tells you what it's all about right here. 
and we already stepped inside so I could buy all three of us tickets so we could go do the locomotive tour and go inside of here when it was done. So what are we waiting for? Let's go in here. They have all kinds of cool things. And one thing that caught my attention, the moment we walked in the door, the old Conrail pin right there. And that's just to start. They have all kinds of little pins here. Look at all these ones here too. Norfolk Southern. I like the I like the locomotive one since I'm used to those in my neck of the woods. Union Pacific, there's a big boy one there. I just walked in the door and I'm already getting run over by a train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you ready for it, guys? Look at this display. And this display goes on and on. Look at the detail in here too with the little trees. How they got the tracks all around. And you'll see just how this, oh, I like how they got this with the bridge being out. The bridge is out. And look, and you'll see more as we get that way. Check that out for size. And you got another locomotive coming up there. Before I forget too, they have this Santa Fe diesel locomotive here. Kind of like the ones we saw outside, but bigger. And that's a cool, that's a cool looking train display. And they got some books here. I like the diesel locomotive ones there. That's good for the idiot like me. I'll probably buy this one, Museum of the American Railroad, because that's where we are at right now, is this museum with this train here. And I know I saw a big boy shirt, t-shirts. I'm definitely gonna grab one as well. Okay, so we're moving back along here on the model railroad that they got. This is just one display. And I'll have to zoom in to show you the rest here because it's so dark. There you go, kind of brightens it up a little bit. There we go, kind of light it up some. Look at this train coming by. I love the landscaping they did on the mountain too. And like they were saying too, this is still a work in progress. This isn't, this isn't nearly done yet. They're still working on this. So over the next few years when they get more funding and visitors like us to help them raise funds, they will be able to bring out more trains and fix up, fix up the outside because they want to put a roof over all the locomotives and train cars out there. I like the town here we got going on. Really cool. There goes a train away. <laughs> oh, now everything's orange. <laughs> it brightened it up some. Now it's turning yellow. <laughs> Let me zoom out so you can see it better. That's what we're talking about. Pretty large display. All right, now that it's brighter in here and you can see everything, <laughs> just look at these model displays. I like the turntable that they have here. What a beautiful display. Keystone steam generator, Erie City. My neck of the woods. Wow. Just trying to take it all in, guys. Throwback. Now that train's up there. That one right there, a little bit ago, came through the tunnels here. And we're going to wait to see another one come through here soon. Look at the town here, too. Rexall, Parker, Drugs. It lights up too. It's flashing. And then we'll get to the, they got more on display over there, but I'm waiting for a train to come out of here so you can see it firsthand. 
Great Northern. Comes around one around the, the town here. <laughs> here comes the train out of the tunnel and into another one. And then you'll actually see it come out of the other side here and take off and disappear. I guess that's the Grand Canyon there. And then look at this old Palo Duro Drive-In Theater. Look at the detail to this too. So much detail and work went into this to make it as nice as it is. And they actually have a movie playing. It's Back to the Future. Look at that. It's awesome. They got Back to the Future playing on there. I know it's hard to see, but this is Back to the Future Part 3. Look at that. Now you can see it a little bit better. As it gets dark again, but now you can see it really well on there. Oh no, that's Back to the Future Part 2, not 3, I'm sorry. Actually, that's Back to the Future Part 1. Shows how much I know. I like how I went from three to two to one. <laughs> Either way, they got Back to the Future playing. I can't remember, even though I've watched all three movies a million times. It's pretty cool how it goes from day to night in here, though. I like it. Very blue in here, like Kayla's hair. <laughs> and it gets purple sometimes, like the ends. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh, thank, oh, you're good. Look at that. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, they got one on display in here? It's in here. Oh, we're, we're going to find it. We're going to find it. Let's find the DeLorean. I'm looking. See, they got, they got police. Up, oh, I see it. There it is. <laughs> Look at that, right in there. There's the DMC DeLorean time machine with the big cable on it, getting ready to go back. And then you got, you got the movie playing on there. Yeah, that's Back to the Future Part One. Goes to show you how much I know. <laughs> Or remember how cool guys now that it's back to daytime for the town you get a view of the whole thing watch out we're about to get run over by the train oh no <laughs> They got some old artifacts. I like this. Train Topia Dispatch Center. Do not touch the controls. Oh, that controls all the trains here on the display in this really, really awesome museum. I can appreciate this painting, too. It's very large, too. But you get to see the whole thing. Here up by the front of the store, you can buy little model trains. These are more for kids, but they're still cool nevertheless. 
I do like seeing the BNSF locomotive they have here too. That thing is large too. I know it's hard to see with all the glare. Oh, and there's a guy in there too. There's a little conductor in there. Let's see if I can kind of block out the shot, the, the lights so you can see it. But yeah, back up a little bit. I know it's kind of grainy because it's a little dark here, but yeah, they have little trains. They have posters, calendars, little keychains. I'm buying this book, Museum of the American Railroad. I am buying that, and I'm definitely buying the Big Boy t-shirt. And I'm loving the little pins, too. Nickel Plate Road, Norfolk Southern. That's cool seeing this one. I really like this one. Very cool. I totally didn't even realize it, but there's the Monsters car right there. And what the lady was telling me was this was old school downtown Dallas that you're looking at. And the man that put this together, he did it in a two-story garage. All the detail was all his own. And that's remarkable. And they put little scavenger hunt items in there like the DeLorean, like the Monsters car. And this was a drive through in Amarillo. And that was his ranch. Amazing. Amazing detail. And when he passed away, they got this display and they put it up here. And it's just remarkable how well it's done. Sorry, I have to be zoomed in a little bit for the light to work. But this is another little display they have behind the counter where you pay. This got the really small train tracks on it. Now look at that. Look, look at the detail in this. That is pretty remarkable. Look at the amount of detail in, that goes into this. You don't just get this done in a couple of minutes. That is amazing. Amazing detail. Okay, everybody. Well, we hope you enjoyed our tour here of the locomotives and trains outside, as well as Traintopia here at the Frisco Discovery Center. Uh, again, this is in Frisco, Texas, and if you're ever in the area, we're just north of Dallas, and for $15, you can go take a tour of the locomotives outside, as well as Traintopia in here. It was so cool. Just don't wear black. I got so hot that I had to come inside because I was wearing black and I was wearing thick black pants, so... Very warm. Yeah, don't wear black when you come out here. Now keep in mind, their Discovery Center, the Discovery Center here and the Traintopia is open most days of the week, but the train tours, they do at designated times, Wednesday through Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., and on Saturdays and Sundays, they do them at 9, 11, and 1 p.m., so... Just keep that in mind and dress appropriately because it's hot, but it's definitely worth it. If you're a rail fan, you definitely need to come out here and check it out, and I think you would enjoy it. So, anyway, with that said, we're taking off. I don't want to leave the AC in here. It's so nice and cool. <laughs> Hungry. Mm -hmm. Didn't but find any food on the trains. No, nothing. Drive one right to Iraq. <laughs> anyway, we're taking off. We hope you enjoyed. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe for more content. And with that said, we'll talk to you later. Take care, everybody. Stay awesome. Have a train to be a <laughs> Bye, everyone.